Yeah, hi, I'm Ori. Uh, we're live. I thought we were live before, we were not. So I guess I gave you guys a little bit of time to kind of hang out. Um, while waiting for other people to join, I think I still need to give people another couple minutes. So I'm just gonna make myself a little quarantine. I just put in a little uh, Star of Bombay gin, and I thought I was gonna sing a little quarantine song. Uh, I got a little sick of birthday, the birthday song while washing my hands. Although it is uh, happy birthday to Liam, happy birthday to Audrey, but I'm not gonna sing to you guys. Although people have requested that I sing on this thing because I can only do Under the Sea so many times. Um, but uh, I thought maybe like, you could do something like she wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny um, sap, uh, no, no, star of sapphire quarantini but that's not a very good song and that was my joke that's the only scripted joke of the night the rest are uh, free flow there's no script I do have some talking points just because I didn't want to mess anything up but um, yeah I figured you know I'll take a little quarantini time while you guys are joining so we'll see Let me just see how many people are on right now, just to make sure that uh, some people are on at least. I've got eight. Amazing. <laughs> I'll wait a little bit longer. Pardon? Okay, you got your first set. It's working? Okay. Yeah, we'll give people a little bit of time, you know. People are moving a little slowly these days. It's all good. I have no idea how many people are going to be on this. The thing is, I, you know, this is supposed to be a tutorial on how to make a Ramos, not a tutorial in how to do social media, which I, um, I, I'm clueless about. So, like, the audio quality isn't great. I'm sure there's a ton of echo. Video quality is not that great, which is probably good because you're looking at me. Um, but, um, yeah, what else was I going to say? I don't know. I mean, look, these are really difficult times for everybody. Um, and, you know, uh, why I'm doing this is uh, the good folks at Bacardi, Denise initially, and then Mike and Kai, they're, they're awesome, and they uh, were very gracious to invite me to do this thing. Um, and I figured it was like a nice little way to kind of give back. I've been making these gin fizzes for I guess about four years now, which is not very long, but it's all I know how to do. And, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not a bartender. I never pretend to be a bartender. I'm a pretender if, at best. Um, but, you know, a long time ago, about four years ago, I came to Singapore to help uh, my friend of 20 years, Igor, whose apartment I'm in right now, and, uh, and his buddy Steve, open employees only here in Singapore. I was in between jobs and between relationships. It was like the perfect time to get the heck out of New York. Um, so one night Steve took us over to Jigger and Pony, the old location used to be right up the block on the Moist Street from employees only. And uh, he ordered me a drink I never heard of before. It was called the Ramos Gin Fizz. I had no idea what I was in for. Uh, then the drink came in all its glory with a beautiful head and it was delicious and he told me that congratulations now all the bartenders in town will hate me for ordering that drink and so um, I decided once uh, this is a much longer story all of my stories are long uh, I'm not going to share too many of them here there's a reason people call my stories story you know like my college roommate used to say that um, I tell my stories in double time uh, like, I, one time I talked about brunch. Yeah, like, I'm doing it right now. There we go. So, anyway. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but uh, what started out as a joke and just me kind of getting behind the bar at EO one time, then two times, then quite a number of times, always as a guest bartender, and I was always honored to be in the presence of the amazing team at EOSG and then at EO Hong Kong, just, you know, who were kind enough to to let me get behind the bar on some silky Sundays. Um, you know, and I figured, 
I wanted to make the drink that nobody else wants to make. Um, it's a drink, it's, it's not difficult to make. If I can do it, anyone can. It's just a pain in the ass. Oh, sorry, damn, it's supposed to be a family show. It's a pain in the patooey. Um, and, you know, I, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to make, but it's a pain in the ass. Oh, damn, see, I did it again. It's fine, we're just gonna let this stuff go. I did say stuff just now. I was gonna say ship. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I apologize in advance. I've been hanging out with a lot of bartenders for a long time, and so you know my vocabulary uh, has has greatly expanded. But uh, much much to uh, to their benefit, to all our benefit maybe. Um, also, by the way, so I am currently broadcasting from the beautiful home of, uh, or the beautiful pantry in the beautiful home of uh, Helen Zhang and Igor Hajismailovich and Rio Zhang Hajismailovich, who may or may not be making an appearance later. I'm trying not to incorporate him into this act. Um, you know, he is a bit underage still, so, you know, want to be able to, like, broadcast this stuff, so hopefully he won't come running around, but if he does, you know, be chill. Um, be cool. He'll be cool. Anyway, um... What else? Yeah, so I, I just, I kind of wanted to make this cocktail that everybody else hated making uh, as a thank you because, you know, I would usually guest bartend on Sundays when it's usually industry night. So when the industry comes in, I want them to be able to have a laugh. I want them to be able to ask me to make them the drink that they hate making. Um, and fortunately, this kind of snowballed into a thing where now it's the only drink that people order for me um, or one of a very limited number of drinks. I'm happy to make it all the time. My last uh, shift in Hong Kong was actually at a place called, um, uh, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Oh no, oh no. Helen, help, line, no. <laughs> uh, oh my God, uh, was at Shady Acres, my God, a place that I love and is very near and dear to my heart. Beautiful, beautiful bar that is doing wonderful things for the community and the industry right now. Um, and beautiful people in general, whom I genuinely love. I don't know why I'm having some, yeah, some brain shortages right now. Hopefully that was one of not too many. Um, but yeah, so I went there and it was an exclusively Ramos shift. Uh, it was one of my favorite nights in Hong Kong, actually. I ended up breaking my personal record, which was 49 Ramoses. They're all handshaken. Uh, so that was, that was nice. And, um... Yes, but, but that was a little painful. Some people, you know, afterwards are like, oh, let me see your guns, and it's, it's not about, I, like you can see, I don't have very impressive uh, physique, but um, I tend to feel it in my shoulder, probably because I have the worst and ugliest shake in the industry. Again, I am not a bartender, I am a pretender at best. But um, yeah, I use sh my shoulder, you'll see later. Um, it's an ugly shake, but it happens to be effective for this drink in particular comes out with a really nice head. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, the, the sad thing about this is I have no idea how many people are watching. I don't know if it's five or 500. I hope it's somewhere in between. Um, I'll share this later on, uh, on my story. I'll, I think the good folks of Bacardi are gonna share this later on, um, on, on their YouTube channel as well. I'm gonna do this again, by the way, on Friday, five o'clock, 5 p.m. Singapore time. That's 5 a.m. New York time. Sorry, I love you, New York, but it's tough. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is like my little way of giving back. People forever have asked me how I make this thing. And you know, I give them like little tidbits here and there, but I've never actually told them everything, to be honest. I kind of wanted to keep it like, you know, you kind of want to have a little special little thing up your sleeve to just kind of share and, uh, um, but today, you know, I almost said the word, um, uh, but today, you know, duck it. We are gonna go all in and uh, I'm gonna give you all my secrets. Uh, hopefully it'll work. You know, this drink is always kind of a 50-50. I, uh, you know, or more like, I don't know, 70, 20, 10%, God knows what, like something breaks or explodes or who knows. Um, but like, I, uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, difficult times, I love you guys. Uh, specifically, I mean, I really want to give a shout out to our healthcare workers and all of our, I mean, all the people in F&B, uh, I don't know, what the hell do you toast to? Everybody who's really 
out there like stocking our shelves and delivering food and making food and all the you know skilled highly skilled essential workers out there like thank you guys like this is none of us would be surviving without you so thank you anyway the rest of my quarantini my little uh star of bombay quarantini <laughs> here we go okay so um, I guess we'll tell you a little bit about this drink, oh, drop a little bit of knowledge. And honestly, I tried to do research uh, recently as I've tried to do many times before. And I keep, at least online, I keep reading kind of conflicting um, information. Some people say that it was created, um, well, everybody knows or agrees at least that it was probably created or at least made famous by Henry C. Ramos, I don't even know how to spell his name because this is all articles online. I don't know if it's Ramos, I don't know if it's Ramos. Um, you know, honestly, when I present it to people, when they ask me, like, oh, what's your specialty? Like, make us your specialty. I, I present it depending on where they sound like they're from. If they have an accent, I call her Ramos. If I, you know, if, if they are American or otherwise, I just say Ramos. Um, I don't know the dude's name. Seems like a good dude. From all accounts, uh, sounded like a dude who really ran a very tight ship, and, um, you know, he, uh, yeah, he invented this thing maybe in 1888, nobody really knows, but it was in New Orleans, he had a little establishment there, wanted to create a cocktail that would draw people in, um, and, uh, and in they came, so much so that he took over a bigger establishment, and, um, and then kind of, this was, you know, the highlight, uh, the, the event, the main event at his, uh, at his place. And, um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, people started coming and ordering this drink so much so that, again, the, the annoying thing about this drink is you have to shake it. People say you have to shake it for 10 minutes. I'm not going to be shaking it for 10 minutes. I don't think anybody out there is shaking it for 10 minutes. Um, but, you know, they say at least 10 minutes. Originally, I think it was 12. I've heard 15. I've heard 13. Who knows? He hired a bunch of shaker boys who would line up. Everyone would shake it until they got tired or for one minute, pass it on to the next guy. And that's how they would kind of keep the flow going, keep the stamina up collectively. Um, and that's basically it. Um, so, yeah, some people, you know, they make this drink with blenders. Some people put in some cornstarch. Some people um, shake it with those, like, little hand cranks. Uh, some people use, like, the bubble tea um, shakers, like machines, and then they kind of outfit them for shakers and use that. I, I do it by hand. Um, as I do most things these days, um, and yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't like using blenders, I like kind of, again, giving, so, what else, um, I did actually, this is unscripted, but I did make a couple of notes just in case, oh yeah, I was supposed to talk about some good news, like the fact that pandas are having sex now, which is great, um, so that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, I don't know, let's, 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 let's make a drink here. Okay, so, um, yeah, the things I start with are orange flower water. This is, people kind of say that it's basically a necessity. I put in like three, four drops, some people put in three, some people put in six. If you put in too many, it'll have that kind of weird over flowery chemical -y taste. Try not to overdo it. Um, when I first made this drink, actually, Jake Page taught me how to make it back when he was at, uh, hey Jake, uh, back when he was at EO Singapore. Um, so he actually told me to add vanilla, which I love. I probably add way too much. I use vanilla extract, um, a bit more natural, a bit more expensive also, but it's like, um, it's delicious. And if you can't get your hands on vanilla extract, vanilla essence is just fine. But uh, vanilla extract also has that like syrupy, as you can see in the pouring, syrupy, sweet kind of texture. So for me, I kind of reduce the, uh, the simple syrup I'm going to add a bit. Um, yeah, but it's, it's yummy, it's natural, and I like it better than the essence, but yeah, do, do what you want. Uh, next, we're going to add uh, half an ounce of, I'm going to be doing this in ounces, by the way, but an ounce is 30 ml, so 15 ml. I'm going to be doing this in ounces. You know, multiply. Um, so, <laughs> half an ounce of simple syrup, and 
you know, they use uh, one-to-one simple syrup, so I do too. I also tend to like my drinks in general on the more dry side. If that's a problem for you, you know, make it three quarters. Uh, a little bit of lime juice, half an ounce of lime juice. Took me about two, no, one, one whole lime to get that here in Singapore. Um, half an ounce of lemon juice, freshly squoozing. And um, yeah, and then the gin. So I tried this earlier and nailed it. I have no idea if I'm going to today, especially if I can't get this guy out. That's gonna suck. Um, sorry, that's gonna stink. Family show. Um, but yeah, we're using Bombay, uh, Bombay Sapphire today. Um, you know, heavy notes of juniper and citrus, but it's still a very dry gin, which makes it kind of great for Ramos. So um, let's see if I nail this. I don't want to make. Oh. Ah! <laughs> nice. I'm not going to nail that. That was not supposed to happen, but we'll see. Yeah, that's going to be a boozy drink, but that's okay. I'm putting in two ounces. I nailed it before, man. That was that was awesome before, but you know hindsight. Um, yeah, and then I kind of just like to taste it. Uh, at this stage, I don't like to taste it after I add the um, delicious. I don't like to taste it after I add the egg white. That's a personal choice. Some people do, some people don't. I'm adding one egg white, nice and sloppy. And, um, and then I give it a dry shake for a while. Oh, and I forgot to mention, one thing to prep beforehand, which would have been nice, um, I use Singha soda water. Um, I tend to actually pour it into a, uh, a tin and, um, and, well, with some ice, and let it sit so I get a little makeshift chiller over here. Let's see if it works. Kind of put a little thing. I don't know if it's gonna work, but hopefully. And I like to keep it super, super cold. Um, the reason being, you know, the colder it is, when we get to the foaming situation, when we reincorporate or when we incorporate the, uh, the soda water, we want it to be super cold so it'll sink to the very, very bottom. So I'm going to keep it in my little chiller. I use Singha. It's a Thai soda water. It's delicious. Um, it's incredibly fizzy, really tiny bubbles, and super carbonated, which is perfect for this drink. Um, really lifts that head up. And again, the colder it is, uh, the better, because it'll, again, sink to the very bottom of the drink and push that head right up. Like a beautiful something. Mushroom? Sure. Um, yeah. And I also forgot to mention that I'm using tins at EO, you know, there's a lot of free pouring going on. I'm usually much better than, uh, than you could see a second ago, I swear. But, um, but yeah, we use Boston uh, glasses there. And uh, for Ramos's, I tend to like using tins. And uh, yeah, it's just because they have a nice tighter seal and it also like, tends to cool up a lot more efficiently and keep things nice and cold, like super, super, super cold. And it makes a great sound. And again, the seal is really important. This is, again, that patented um, terrible, terrible shake that's gonna be, that would be embarrassing for any bartender, but you know. I remember, <laughs> you shake this for about like 30 seconds to a minute maybe, just to kind of incorporate all the ingredients, get it nice and fluffy, no need to overdo it. Um, again, this is a dry shake. Some people do a reverse dry shake for this thing. Um, I don't, you know, just because I don't like straining this drink. I like for everything that I put in it to go into the drink at the end. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, yeah, that's it. I remember Beckley, when you first saw, I don't know if you're watching, but when Beckley first saw my shake in Hong Kong, one thing she told me, the greatest advice I've ever heard was uh, breathe while you shake. So that was a good thing, especially when I'm about to shake for a while. Um, okay, so this is looking pretty good. And basically, again, once I start shaking, I really want to move a little bit quickly. So I'm going to, I kind of hand chopped a little bit of uh, ice cubes. I tend to use four ice cubes. Um, I try and keep them as square as possible and as sharp as possible. These aren't that sharp, but that's okay. And, uh, and at this point I actually incorporate the cream. I'm using uh, President, which I think is French. So President, 
and um, yeah, it's nice and creamy by definition, and uh, it tends to do a good job. This is when the, the real shape begins. I have no idea if you can hear me right now. Uh, I hope that you can. This is also usually when I like tell a funny story, or I more importantly, or usually I'll, I'll ask them for a story. I'll tell like my origin story or something. But basically now you want to kind of shake it until there's you, you don't hear anything until you hear that nice little like fluffy sound, kind of like you got a. I don't know, like a baby bunny inside. That, that, that's the sound you're looking for. Now it's still clinking, clanking, we keep shaking. Don't mind my form. Um, I had, I know I had a better story. Did I, did I have any other notes? Did I forget anything? The soda, the glass. Oh, right. The other thing you want to do ahead of time. Oh, hello. It's my little bar back. What's up, dude? Oh, thanks. Whatever. Oh. You want to you shake too? I can let you shake. Here. Hold on. Here you go. Shake. Whoops. Shake. There you go. <laughs> shake, 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 shake. Shake, 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 shake. Yeah, again, don't stop while this is going on. I also uh, forgot to mention beforehand, um, in addition to putting the soda in the freezer, I also put a highball glass in the freezer. I tend to use kind of a smaller highball glass. Shake, 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 Rio. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake it like it owes you money. Shake it like it cheated on your sister. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm kind of starting to feel that there's very, very little ice left. It's a little concerning because we haven't been shaking for that long. Also concerning that this little thing is chipped, but again, I put a little this uh, Collins glass in the freezer beforehand and that keeps it super, super, super nice and cold. Oh, you can go in there, buddy. It's okay. Put in about, uh, about an uh, inch. Yeah, should be fine. Oh, nice, real. Thanks for cleaning up. Yeah, he's going through the bounty right now. This is great. Um, okay, so now, sounding like a, a bunny on a cloud. I hope this doesn't explode over this tiny baby. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Again, after shaking for this long, when it's so cold, it's a tight seal. We're almost there. Okay. And I really don't want this to explode on live TV, because I didn't make a spare this time. But it's looking beautiful and frothy. And then we add it basically, try and it up quickly, but smoothly, kind of a combination of the two. And then I put it back in the freezer. So I'm actually going to use the real freezer for this part. But I fill it right to the brim. And then I put it in here. So there's no chicanery going on in this part of the exhibition. I literally just put it in the fridge. Oh, Rio, you're done? This is a half ass shake. Um, yeah, and usually now is the point where I kind of clean up. Uh, I also am using kind of a small glass this time, so I'm going to only use one. That's fine. So, uh, yeah, and this is like when I usually clean up, which uh, is a nice thing. And clean up, clean up, clean up. Oh, I could also, I mean, among other things, I've got my soda that's been chilling with some ice. Just going to strain that. Right into this bad boy in a second. Um, forgetting something? Garnishes, I'm not big on garnishes. Well, I guess I could. So, my grandma, my mother's mother, we used to make these, um, we used to make these, uh, like candied orange peels with like all the excess oranges from like the week. I used to drink a lot of citrus. And uh, so I candied some of them. Maybe we'll put it on top. We'll see how this goes. It's again, it's a 50-50 gamble. I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's see. So you want to let it rest in the freezer for about a full minute, maybe two, if you can. Um, and then, yeah. And again, usually clean up, tell a funny story. I've got no stories. Oh, right. I forgot to talk about uh, versatility, limitations, all that stuff. I mean, this drink, look. 
Um, there's a lot you can do with it. It's kind of an interesting base for me. I, I've made um, a version of it called Shlomo's uh, for Chinese New Year. We did a Jewish themed Chinese New Year at employees only in Hong Kong. And I made a Shlomo's gin fizz with um, verjou and, uh, and manischewitz, which was awesome and lovely. We, uh, what else did I make? I've made a key lime pie version with uh, coconut cream and only lime juice. Um, no orange flower water and, uh, and that. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, make them whatever you want. Like they're, they make for gorgeous drinks because they kind of have that nice little layering naturally and they separate, it's beautiful. Um, again, I have no idea how that's gonna turn out. So I, I'm really, you know, a little scared, but we'll see. Um, other thing, oh yeah, the limitations of this cocktail. Obviously, you know, it's a cream-based drink and uh, unfortunately that means that like if you're making it for someone, they're gonna be drinking it for a while. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate uh, because, you know, you know, ideally it'd be nice if people drank some, some more of it. But like for a while, I thought maybe I should open up a place and only make Ramos Gin Fizzes but the fact of the matter is, like, if I do, then, um, you know, no one's gonna drink. Like, they're gonna get one, they're gonna come in, have one drink, and then I'm buggered. So, um, I'm gonna use, because this is just for a demonstration, I'm gonna use the same straw. Don't, don't hate me for it. But here's our guy, he's been resting for a while. This is kind of a little cheat, because I like to make a little hole in the middle as I taste. Traditionally, I'd be throwing this out, but I'm going to keep it and use it later. Um, and yeah, now we strain our cold, super, super, super ice cold soda water. Again, people can throw these from a mile away. I tend to not want to. I try to keep it kind of nice and fizzy and controlled. I, I'd love to get like a crisp ring, but again, I'm not. I'm working with like a home freezer here, so let's see. So look, the other thing is, I could keep going. There's like about this much foam left. I keep going for days. Bartenders, when they come in, oh, shoot. Well, that's supposed to be, sorry, usually add this, <laughs> add this soda water into whatever's left of your Ramos so it actually doesn't dilute too much. Whoops. And um, yeah, and then you can kind of put your straw in and even a metal straw will stand up. But, um, but, yeah, usually I don't like to dilute it too much, so I'll just um, add it to this guy, and I'll really just give it like a good two centimeters. It's impressive enough, it's good enough for Instagram stories and whatnot, and, um, but, you know, but it, but it still will taste good, so that's kind of important for me. Um, but if it's a bartender and it's late at night and we're all just kind of having fun, we want to see how it goes, yeah, you know, we could, we could go for, for days. But anyway, um, you know, People tend to sip this, as I just mentioned, they, you know, they'll sit with this for like a half an hour. I, um, my favorite thing is when someone comes in, usually it's someone from the industry, they order this drink, it takes me, you know, eight minutes, 10 minutes to make it, and then they just, you know. And the foam stands, so that's kind of a good indication. Um, what else have I got? Um, anything else that I forgot? Yeah, I was gonna make a backup, but that one came out pretty good, so we'll live with it. I know it wasn't as crisp, but again, you know, I'm just putting it in the fridge. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I, these are extraordinarily challenging times. Um, we'll get through this, we will get through it together. I, you know, over the last few years, I've spent a considerable amount of time in Asia, and I've, oh damn, my phone fell, no, I've uh, lost touch with a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that I really love, a lot of people that I care about, a lot of people that I miss, and a lot of people that I, even though I haven't spoken to in a long time, I think about almost every day, um, you know, over the next couple weeks, I plan on reaching out to a lot of those people, a lot of you, maybe, um, and I, um, yeah, 
like I, I encourage everybody to try and just stay positive, stay together. I mean, it's, you know, there's, oh, and we got a delivery actually, hold on, we ordered some masks. Hold on one second. Hello. Hi. I'll take that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm actually in the middle of something right now, but I can... Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sorry. Hey. Got some masks. Here we go. You want the masks? Um, actually, yeah, that's one thing that, um, you know, my incredibly generous and wonderful um, hosts or, you know, yeah, uh, have, and I have been doing over the last uh, few weeks is we've been trying to kind of hunt down as many N95 masks as we can and send them back to hospitals in the U.S. Um, you know, uh, if you want to, like, get involved in that kind of a, an operation, just give me a shout. I, yeah, we welcome all the help we can get. They're not easy to find these days, especially with the latest kind of um, lockdown in Singapore, but, um, you know, we may still be able to get some, We're, we keep trying, so we'll see. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of pressure these days to, you know, to use this time wisely, to be super productive, to learn a new skill, or to read, or to write a book, or to, I don't know, um, I don't know, emerge out of this, like, some... Someone else, but look, I know that's a tremendous amount of pressure. So, like, I think we all just need to like calm down. Like, if you need, just take some time for yourself. <laughs> hey, buddy, sanitize, wash your hands. No, like, you know, thanks, buddy. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Sanitize. <laughs> um, you know, wear a mask when you go outside. Um, stay at home as much as you possibly can. Save lives. Um, and, man, I wasn't going to do this whole PSA here, and I was actually thinking I might end up doing a PSA, but I wanted to give you a warning beforehand, and now I didn't do that. Whoops. But, like, look, you know, these pressures to, like, to become productive and to come out of this, like, some brand new person, like, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Just take time, take care of each other, take care of your loved ones, take care of your families, take care of yourself. Again, we're going to emerge out of this stronger together um and yeah i've got nothing but love for you guys i was supposed to do a q a i have no idea if that's gonna work let's let's see you know let's see what happens i have no idea if anybody's still watching there's, a, 26 people watching. there's 26 people watching let's let's turn this around are there any q a's i, I don't know what the hell you guys have been saying on the <laughs> on the um on the comment section but you know I don't know if anybody has a question. I'm just gonna wave to people. Oh, I wave to Pengan. Hi. Oh. Do you, do you want do you want me to make you another one? This one's kind of done. Sorry. Um, man. <laughs> I you know. If there are any questions, I'm trying to think of what else I forgot. If there, I mean, I forgot so much. I forgot so little. Who knows? You know. They, oh, they wanted to see more head. I mean, look, this is all head. This is all I've got. Ronan, no shlom. <laughs> One more line. <laughs> you guys are adorable. Um, I was going to have a backup one just in case this kind of flopped. I'm glad we didn't need to. Um, you want more, you One more? What are you... I'm going to have to make everything from scratch. I don't have any juices. Um, how about this? Tune in on Friday at 5 p.m. Singapore time, and um, and we'll make one more together. Juice some live. We have nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm gonna share this on on Insta and then on my Insta story, and then you can just watch it again. Um, no, I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. You know, stay healthy, stay safe, stay awesome. Ramos delivery. <laughs> Um, maybe on the next one, maybe I'll prep too, and maybe after I show you how to do like the good one, maybe we'll make like an under two minute one just for fun, because uh, you know this is kind of fun. Blender version, never, never. I'm doing this, but it's out of frame. Never. Um, love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, stay safe. Stay healthy. See you guys soon.
Bye.